Yeah, I know some of them. Everyone. Welcome to Out of Spec. Today, I'm super excited because I am here with Travis. Hello. Hello. And you represent, well, the Boulder Fire Rescue. City of Boulder Fire Rescue. That's yes. awesome. And um, we have, well, behind us, this is just a diesel truck, right? This is a diesel truck, yep. But there's some super exciting news that Boulder recently announced. Uh, it sounds like you guys are going to order an electric, range-extended, plug-in hybrid, whatever you want to call it, fire truck. Yep, yep. Got it on order. Uh, should be here 18 to 24 months. It's the Rosenbauer uh, RTX. That's awesome. And yeah. our audience, you know, we always cover the consumer EV stuff and fleet and commercial is so exciting, but we know so little about it. Um, how did this Rosenbauer RTX, like how did this come about? Where, where was the idea to like, let's get an electric fire truck for the city? Great question. Um, the, the technology is very, very new. I think uh, the industry would say they're comfortable with that answer. Um, <laughs> we approached it in, in a slightly different sense. Uh, so City of Boulder obviously has a climate initiative where we're directed as fleet managers and purchasing uh, anything mechanical. Uh, they want us to, to go electric or hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a very complex uh, problem to solve in that during the pandemic, the production uh, delays on most diesel uh, apparatus uh, pushed out somewhere between two to four years. Mm. So looking at uh, potential early adoption of the electric engine uh, uh, had like a hint that there might be a shorter delivery window for our, our needs mm -hmm. as well as overlap into our climate initiative. Gotcha. So, so that, it that's, kind of pushed the urgency of that a little yeah, bit forward with yeah. the pandemic and supply shortages. Uh, really, it was I was at a fleet conference learning how to mm -hmm. how to help manage a fleet from fire uh, and yeah. our fleet partners. Yeah. And there was a side conference on uh, electric uh, fire engines, something something to the effect of like the future of of where this industry is going. And gotcha. Popped into that and learned something about it and kind of started from there. Yeah. So. And super interesting. I know we were talking a bit before this, you drive a Tesla now. I mean, driving electric vehicles in the consumer space, we love the efficiency of them, the yep. torque, they're super fun. In a fleet context like this or fire rescue, what are the benefits of going electric? So for us, the uh, outside of the climate mandate, the, mm -hmm. the benefit, pleasantly surprised as we learned more about the Rosenbauer. Um, the Rosenbauer RTX uh, has a an occupational health support uh, integration to their apparatus. So yeah. this this is a very traditional uh, diesel apparatus. This is yeah. our newest, yeah. um, not even a year old. So frame, frame mm -hmm. on rail, um, basic technology that, that's been around for, Proven, yeah. forever. Yeah. Um, what Rosenbauer did is they went to a unibody design. So it's mm -hmm. built more like a modern car. Huh. Um, it does look a little bit different, so you get you get a, a, a updated body styling yeah. from the Rosenbauer, which um, and is that going to be like better handling over bumps and rough surfaces? Yeah. So yeah. what what that en what that enabled Rosenbauer to do was to move some of our equipment yep. um, accessibility. So you can see our, our cabinets are are fairly high. Yeah. So for some of our shorter firefighters today. Um, if we put a big heavy tool like up high in the back of the cabinet, it's difficult to get at, right? Gotcha. So what Rosenbauer is offering in this in this new integration and design is uh, computer aided design placement of our tools mm -hmm. to, f to better fit the occupational health needs of our firefighters. So basically going electric, that platform flexibility helps them make a more ergonomic vehicle, exactly. more accessible to yeah. more firefighters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing it did is it changed our, uh, so in our cabs, yeah. Today we have what we call a doghouse. It's where where the the diesel motor kind of pushes into the cab. Mm -hmm. So this feels a lot like a like a car. Yeah. Um, you get in and you have your own little passenger space. There's okay. there's a room in the back for the firefighters. Yeah. With the the Rosenbauer, that whole powertrain is essentially in the drive axles. Mm -hmm. So by pushing all that down, it opened up the cabin to almost like a small office. 
Yeah. So in this in this engine we can fit five seated and seat belted, mm -hmm. and the Rosenbauer we can seat up to seven. Wow. Yeah. The packaging benefits. I mean, we see it in the consumer space even, right? Like the Rivian vehicles, mm -hmm. Tesla. Super impressive what they can do with vehicle sizes because they can right put the batteries in almost like an on rail right. skateboard right. platform. Sounds like this is a similar approach, just scaled up. Yeah. Very 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 similar. Yeah. Um, the batteries for weight distribution they put in a couple different places. If you need the specs on that, we, we yeah we could definitely get you those. But for the most part, yeah, it it's very similar similar to right. that um the the ability to move the drive the overall drive height so we can adjust the drive height on the Rosenbauer wow. on these it's it's what you see so it's like air suspension air yeah. suspension yeah so they use like uh Volvo Penta suspension so what what they're using in buses and love that and industry um yeah and so what what that enables us to do is not only adjust the drive height on demand but we can we can adjust it so it fits our needs mm -hmm. uh, for for getting in and out of the apparatus. Which, uh, you know, it's like it's like a paper clip. You bend it mm -hmm. two or three times, it's it's fairly resilient. Mm -hmm. You bend it a hundred times and it snaps, right? Yeah. That's kind of like the firefighter's body in getting in and out of the apparatus. Is mm -hmm. that that overall occupational stress? Yeah. You know, is is as tough as our uh, men and women are in working out. Yeah. Um, we're, we're still we're still human. So, addressing that in a sense that we're we're now able to move those. Uh, those heavy tools uh, maybe make the step uh, easier to get on and off. You yeah. know, you do that a thousand times over your career, you you start to feel it. So that's that's the emerging space that I think is attractive for uh, us in yeah. partnering with Rosenbauer is, is trying to address our people's needs. Yeah. Um, you know, right now you go you go to fire apparatus industry and you get you get what they kind of design and give you. Mm -hmm. um, it, the Rosenbauer approach was very very different. It was uh, kind of refreshing to see that they were looking at the firefighters first uh, and then trying to alter or, or redesign a machine around them so it, it better integrates with, with our overall uh, service delivery. That's super interesting you say that. A few months ago, I was talking to uh, some Amazon delivery drivers because they're starting to mm. use the Rivian delivery vans. Uh -huh. And I heard a similar story about how like some of the ergonomic benefits of that vehicle make these you know small affordances that you know, if you're just looking from the outside, don't seem that important. Like, right. okay, you have to press one fewer button, the door automatically opens. What does that mean? Right. If you're doing that job, you know, long hours every day, mm -hmm. it seems to add up to make a really big difference. So that's super cool. Uh, the other thing I want to know is, you know, we'll put the nerdy specs for our audience all in text here, I'm sure, like kilowatt output of the motor, mm -hmm. battery size, mm -hmm. sounds like this, I mean, it's some heavy duty stuff as you would expect. Uh, but the electric system is not only being used, I think the high voltage one for driving the vehicle, it sounds like the pump is also powered by that. Yeah, so the pump, so the, the, the basic uh, analogy that I've used for this is it's like a locomotive. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, there is a diesel motor backup. Yeah. Uh, it's a six cylinder, uh, BMW motor. And that's and it, like a range extending. Yeah. Function. So that's yeah. the range. So basically think of a generator on board. Yeah. So the battery management system, the RTX, when it gets to a certain threshold, mm -hmm. will automatically kick that diesel motor in if we need it. Right. So 99, they're, they're saying somewhere between 97 to 99% of the time, mm -hmm. we're 100% uh, electric. Interesting. So the six, I, I think the specs like, a, yeah, three liter BMW, uh, six cylinder engine, you know, super cool clean burning diesel. So that is kind of acting as a generator for the rest of the electrical system. It's never directly driving it's, the vehicle. It's never direct. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. never directly driven by the internal combustion yeah. engine that simply back feeds the batteries, charges the batteries, and they, yeah. they've built in some safety factors. So, yeah. uh, so that works. So, so yes, getting back to your question, the yeah. pump, the pump is, uh, you know, like the pump on this comes from, uh, a diversion of the diesel output mm -hmm. and it either goes to the wheels or yeah. goes to the pump. Right. Um, with the Rosenbauer, it's, it's its own unit. So it, it's, okay. it's paired with its own electric motor, yeah. uh, which allowed them to move the pump uh, to the rear. And I, I, if I, if I remember right, that yeah. was for weight distribution. Interesting. Um, but, I Go ahead. Sorry, I'm not a firefighter, but I like. Are there any benefits to the electric pump? Like, is it more powerful? Is it easier to use? Oh, great question. So it is. So our, we we have a standard pump output yeah. that that we uh, we go to spec with. Right. Um, the Rosenbauer will pump uh, the same output as this. So if yeah. you, if you think of gallons per minute GPM mm -hmm. yeah. or uh, PSI, it'll 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 match what we're currently purchasing. Gotcha. Um, where it differs 
is when this thing is pumping at capacity, mm -hmm. you can't miss it. It sounds like it's going to take off, right? Because yeah. you've got a you've got a huge diesel motor turning right. all the mechanical and parts. Are the um, you know women and men doing that right now? Are they wearing headphones or hearing protection or something? So some of the time, yeah. um, it, it it is a little difficult to wear those all the time. We do have them. They're kind of like a wireless over the ear, like what you might see a private pilot helicopter. Wearing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, something like that, so we can still communicate. Right. Um, but moving to the Rosenbauer will be significantly quieter. Wow. So we got to see the demo. Um, myself and, and, and another uh, engineer mm -hmm. went out and, and we were able to pump it. And it was mm -hmm. it was very, very quiet. I mean, we could have this conversation. You could hear yeah. the pump moving. Um, one of the biggest sounds was the water moving through the pump. Wow. Um, which just I, the mechanical. I mean, you can't avoid that. That's right, just water. Right. Yeah. That's just that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, so we're hoping the on-scene delivery will be a little, mm -hmm. uh, little quieter for for um, our firefighters. Other than that, there's not a huge difference in how it pumps. It's still mm -hmm. gonna it's still gonna pump the capacity we yeah. need. Um, it does have a high pressure uh, for the fire nerds out there. It has a it has a high pressure side of the pump, mm -hmm. which uh, these don't. Okay. So these we basically pump to our highest pressure and then we gate down. So if you're pumping one line to 200 psi and the other line to 170, you're just kind of closing the valve, mm -hmm. right? That's how we, we Power differentiate. Power sharing. Almost. Yeah. yeah. So the Rosenbauer pump has two sides. They have a, a what they call a, a low pressure, which is what we use, low pressure, high volume. And then they'll have a high pressure, which is like, a, a, think of it like a 150 gallon per minute pressure washer. So we can use it in a flex space of mm -hmm. pulling off a, a booster reel. Think of like a big um, wound up hose. So we could put out a small brush fire with it. Wow. Um, we could we could do pretty much anything with it. It gives us another another tool for the box. Right. All so. with theoretically one vehicle and obviously they'll exactly. be a fleet. So for the moment, it just does uh, one that's on order, right? For the moment, yes. yes. That's super exciting. And I think the question probably will be in a lot of people's mind, just like with consumer space, it's also range. What's the realistic range of a fire truck, electric or diesel, you know, day to day? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll compare the two together. So yeah. the, the limiting factor in range on this is diesel, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's the same for the Rosenbauer. Yeah. Because it has that internal uh uh, generator, the the range extender. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 have the same logistical um, end point that we would with a traditional diesel. From what I understand in the literature, uh, like anything, it depends on how you drive it of or course. how you pump it. Yeah. Um, the Rosenbauer will operate ninety nine percent of the time on its battery. Yeah. When its battery gets to a twenty percent mark, the internal combustion engine kicks on. Right. So essentially it has the same range if we were driving it mm -hmm. that this does. It has the same pump time as this does. Yep. Um, and again, the only the only difference is how it's sourcing the energy. Mm -hmm. So if we're, say we're on a large uh, structure fire and we're pumping an operation that's gonna last three days, Yeah. right? This is gonna run out of diesel. The yeah. Rosenbauer is gonna run out of diesel. So we build into our logistical system uh, mm -hmm. a diesel delivery. So somebody shows up in a truck, right. puts it in there and we're good. So it's the same, gotcha. if, if that helps you to hear. No, that makes sense. And that flexibility seems really awesome. You know, it sounds like basically when you urgently need to fill really up, there's no charge anxiety. Mm -hmm. No, right. like get me a DC fast charger. Right, no, right. Just pump some more diesel in if you need to. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. On a regular day-to-day -day basis though, I'm imagine you guys are gonna need to be charging that almost, I think it's like 130 kilowatt hour gross Volvo pack, uh, or it's like two cells, but you know, split up. But basically charging that overnight, what's that gonna look like? So right now, um, we're, we were able to pull data from Rosenbauer. So Rosenbauer put mm -hmm. the first two RTXs in service, if I'm getting this right, in Berlin. Yeah. So they concepted their, their truck. They built, a, they built their, their first ever. Yeah. They altered some stuff. They made, they made the first two deliveries to Berlin. What we're able to take from that, those, those trucks have been in Berlin for around two years, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. They pulled a lot of data out of that. So initially, in one of the firehouses in Berlin, they put a 150 kVA charger. And from what I understand, they realized fairly quickly they didn't need that level. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to take delivery of is a 60 kVA um, charger. Yep. So when we went and visited Los Angeles, they they would plug theirs in when it needed it. Yeah. Um, I think for for some EV owners, you know, in, in a Tesla or a Polestar or whatever whatever you guys are showing on your site, mm -hmm. it'll be a little bit like that, right? Yeah. Like before we go to bed, we're obviously going to plug it in. Yeah. Um, if we come back from a couple calls and the battery's at 80%, there's probably no need to plug it in. So it, it'll be an interesting space to see how we 
you know, do we write a policy? Yeah. Do we leave it up to the engineers? You know, we, right. we have extremely competent um, engineers who, who are really good at what they do. Yeah. They're going to figure this thing out in a couple of days. Yeah. They're going to understand, you know, when we have to plug it in. Yep. Um, what the limitations are on it. Um, yeah. That's great. So, so I guess the, 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 the end of that is, is I don't know, right? Okay. It, it'll, it'll, it'll take us a bit to figure it out. I, I would guess at first everybody's going to be plugging it in. Right. Um, but yeah, and you'll develop a routine and all that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the infrastructure is going to be dedicated. It's not like, oh, no, someone plugged in their leaf or whatever. <laughs> we can't charge. No, like, no, you'll have your own fleet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So right now we're building uh, a new Station 3. Yeah. And based on what uh, my team was able to pull out of our scouting mission, uh -huh. um, we were able to hit the architect of the, the uh Station three, yeah. just in time to upgrade. I shouldn't say upgrade to redirect with actual numbers what we're going to need. Yeah. So we we kind of future proofed. We hope the the station to the point where uh, the station will open, yeah. and a couple months later, I think we'll take deliver the RTX and it'll be ready to go. Wow. Um, so that that worked out. That was just kind of a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Um, we did do an assessment of a couple other stations to see what the next step would be. You know, concepting. Uh, a second one, where would it go? Yep. A lot of that was based on the infrastructure. So we, mm -hmm. we did identify that and, and have a plan based on um, uh, availability of a second, when and if we get one. Right. Um, you you kind of have to solve both of those at the at, at the purchase point. Right. Luckily, there's there's a lo a, a, enough lead time in the delivery of this. We have we yep. have time to to alter some. Yep, and so. it sounds like you're getting organized and stuff, and hopefully it comes sooner rather than later, right. but it's super exciting nonetheless. My last question isn't directly related to the Rosenbauer, because you know I'm sure that's going to be a very advanced system, but we're seeing occasionally EVs, especially older EVs, it's not super common, but if they do catch on fire, those fires are super tricky. I don't know mm. if you've put out or you know people who put out EV fires, but <laughs> there's batteries, the runway reactions, there's a lot mm. of complexity there. Do you have anything to say on like putting out EV fires and maybe strategies you guys have come up for that? Yeah, you know, I think I, I, anybody out there watching watching your channel, I mean, the, you call the fire department, you expect them to show up with a solution to your problem, right? Yeah. Um, we we I, I don't know that we've actually had a EV fire in the city of Boulder. Right. Um, it doesn't mean it couldn't have happened, but I, mm -hmm. I, I can guarantee you we'll get the fire out, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's interesting looking at that space is, is there's a potential for that, right? Right. But but we're carrying like 65 gallons of diesel fuel on this right now. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if we're really concerned- you There's know, a lot of energy potential right, in that. There's a, there's a yeah. lot of potential en yeah. energy in that as well. So right. it's, I, I'm not saying it's it's impossible. It's, it's just a different fire to right. put out. Generally, just what we've noticed anecdotally is, yeah, the, the chances for an EV fire are extremely rare because these are really advanced, thermally managed, high voltage battery systems right. in these cars. However, when they happen, you see these news stories, it's like takes, I don't know, a lot of gallons of water to put out. It does. It's complicated. Right. And so I'm just like, is there, you know, uh, some people use blankets, I guess. Some people will try to immerse it. Right. Uh, but we, we've heard of a lot of them, uh, yeah. the, the, the different techniques. We are looking and we have been looking before right. the purchase of this yeah. at some some emerging technologies in EV fires. Yeah. Um, Rosenbauer makes uh, a, a, a gadget they have. Um, there are a couple other ones, and essentially, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it's a piercing nozzle. Okay. So think of it like a, a rod, where you're going to pump water through that you could drive into the battery pack. Oh. So Rosenbauer's approach is you you hook this. It, it looks like a little uh, Roby vacuum, right? Yeah. It's a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and you slide it under the EV. Most mm -hmm. of the battery packs are under there, and it yeah. punctures a hole yeah. into the cells and then injects the water into the cell. Okay. So the increased uh, volume of water trying to put out a, a, an, an EV fire, yeah. I would guess, because I've, I've never fought one myself, yeah. is that you're, you're always trying to get that water to the fuel source to cool the fuel, yep. right? And the EVs are wrapped in everything you see, the doors, the roof, the body, but the the packs themselves super protected and they're super are dense. also sealed. So if you're right. spraying water on it, you're not actually getting water to the to the fuel to cool that source. Yep. So that that's kind of where, where we would would figure how how to attack that yeah. and, and cool that down yeah so super interesting strategy hope it's not something we encounter but right. it's good to know <laughs> that like there's yeah thinking ahead for that and uh, super excited for the rosenbauer well you know if you guys let us we'd love to take a look when that does yeah. take delivery and thanks so much travis for yeah. speaking with me today absolutely